There are times when animals can really shock us. This wolf finds a baby in a car accident. Then he brings her to the woods, and the unthinkable happens. There was a strange silence in the air. The sounds of the woods and birds had been disrupted by the terrible crashing of a car down the side of an embankment. The car had blown a tire, and the woman who was driving lost control of the vehicle. It went off the road and then started rolling. When it hit the gravel, rolling down the short hill, the woman was thrown out of the car. There was noise of metal breaking and bending, a baby was crying, and glass was shattering. Then the car finally came to a stop, and everything was quiet. Even the baby had stopped crying, like she was in shock. The woman groaned, but she was unconscious. She was in pain and worried about her baby, but she couldn't focus enough to wake herself up. Smoke filled the air, the car seat was partially out of the car, but the baby was still fastened onto it. It lay on its side. Then suddenly something strange happened. A wolf came out of the woods. It stood and smelled the air, then went over to the mother. The wolf detected the scent of blood and sensed her deteriorating condition. Next, it moved to the car seat situated near the car with the smoke from the hood intensifying. The wolf gripped the car seat and tugged at it, prompting the baby to cry once more. As the wolf examined the baby, the mother stirred from her slumber, catching sight of the massive wolf standing near her child. Then she caught sight of the wolf, its teeth exposed menacingly. She wanted to scream, but the woman lost consciousness again. What she didn't see was the wolf diligently gnawing at the straps that held the baby in place. Once the baby was free, the wolf gently lifted her by her clothing and carried her off into the woods. Meanwhile, the woman had a mobile app that could automatically alert the police and emergency services in the event of a car accident. Help was on the way, and they arrived just in the nick of time, witnessing the car starting to ignite and burn in the wooded area. Simultaneously, they dispatched a search and rescue expert named Nolan Stevens, who happened to be the first to arrive and promptly sprang into action. Nolan ran over to the vehicle and tried to check the inside for any survivors, but the fire was too intense, and he couldn't get very close. Being a veteran, he was not one to back down easily, and he probably would have attempted to force the door open. Fortunately, that proved unnecessary as at that very moment, he spotted the woman on the hill where she had been thrown from the vehicle. She was barely breathing, but he couldn't move her. Such a terrible accident could definitely lead to a neck injury. A wrong move could leave her paralyzed for life. He knew better than to take any chances. Unless she stopped breathing, he wouldn't step in. When the ambulance arrived, he released a breath that he didn't even know he had been holding in, recognizing the severity of her injuries and the critical nature of her head injury. The EMTs acted swiftly but carefully and loaded her into the ambulance. Halfway to the hospital, the woman started waking up. She could barely speak, but she started calling for Anna right away. One paramedic tried to calm her down, but she wouldn't stop asking for this mysterious person. At first, they thought she was just mumbling things, but then they heard some words that made their blood run cold. The woman kept saying two words, my baby. Then she asked them if her baby was okay. It was the first time that anyone realized that there was another person in that car crash. They couldn't go back. The mother needed to get to the hospital, but they did radio the news over to the rest of the first responders. Someone had to get over there and search for that baby. Nolan was the closest and the person with the most experience. Cursing himself because he didn't search the area after the police arrived, he turned around and rushed back to the scene. The car's fire had been put out, but it looked bad. His first thought was that the baby would not have survived if she was still inside when it started burning. He hoped that the baby had made it out by some miracle. Nolan's eyes locked onto the car, and he noticed a trail of drag marks leading away from it. Determined he followed these marks and eventually discovered the car seat hidden among some bushes. The relief was immense. If the car seat had been too close to the vehicle, it could have posed a severe risk to the baby due to smoke and fumes. However, somehow it had been pulled a significant distance away from the burning car, 
giving little Anna a fighting chance. Ready to pick the baby up and take her home, he flipped the car seat over. To his astonishment, there was no baby in the seat. What's more, the safety belt on the car seat had been crudely cut with jagged edges. It was a baffling scene. The baby had vanished. As Nolan conducted his investigation, he came across a chilling sight. Massive paw prints that he recognized as belonging to a very large wolf. If a wolf had taken the baby, was it already too late to help her? He decided to follow the tracks in an attempt to find out. If it was indeed too late, he would at least be able to give the family some closure. But he decided to focus on the positive and convince himself that the baby was safe out there. The opposite was just too unthinkable to bear. Nolan promptly informed his team about his mission to rescue the baby and set out without delay. He carried a backpack containing essential hiking gear, ensuring he was well prepared for the journey. Within minutes of discovering the car seat, time was of the essence, and the rest of the team would join him as soon as they could. Nolan diligently pursued the wolf's tracks as far as daylight allowed. However, an obstacle loomed on his path, the onset of darkness. As night fell, he was forced to halt his search. He had a flashlight, but overlooking any crucial clues could make the difference between locating the baby and losing her forever. Nolan couldn't bear the thought of retreating to his comfortable warm bed while a baby was out there in the darkness. He was determined not to waste time by returning home and then coming back. Instead, he would wait right there until the first light of morning. After informing his team of his intentions, he established a makeshift camp. If the baby was anywhere close, then he was determined to find her as quickly as he could. He couldn't sleep much, and with every wolf call, he was terrified that something was happening to little Anna. It was cold, and he could do nothing but worry about the baby. Besides the fact that she was likely with a wolf, she had also just been in a terrible car accident. She might have serious injuries that needed attending. It was a bad situation all around. The only silver lining in this grim situation was that Anna's mother reached the hospital, and they determined that her spine and neck were both unharmed, which was quite remarkable considering how she had been thrown from the vehicle. However, they did discover that she had suffered severe head injuries. The doctors had to make the hard choice of putting her in an induced coma, allowing her to heal. The doctors were very concerned about the bad shakes she was in, but in some small way, Nolan was grateful that they didn't have to tell a mother that her baby was lost in the woods or that wolf tracks were their only lead to find her. For now, the mother was in blissful ignorance of the danger her baby was in, but the rest of the family wasn't as lucky. Anna's father just wanted to go out and find her himself. They assured him that more experienced professionals were handling the situation. The best he could do was to stay by his wife's side and be strong for her. It was hard. Nolan had been on many rescue missions, both when he was in the service and while doing search and rescue, but this was the most worried he had ever been. In most instances, he had searched for adults or at the very least teenagers who could make some efforts to survive until they were located. However, in this case, they were dealing with a helpless baby, not even a year old, who had no means to care for herself. She relied entirely on them to rescue her, and they would need to do it fast. He was going to do everything in his power to make that happen. The moment that it was light enough to see, he set off again. The day was cold, but Nolan didn't want to think of what that could mean for the baby. The wolf tracks led him past a few dens that he knew had been used by the wolf family in the area in the past. There were a lot of tracks overlapping each other. Nolan had to be careful, he was very experienced, but he was just one man. In the event of a wolf pack attacking him, Nolan knew he wouldn't stand much of a chance. Moreover, if the wolves sensed any threat to their offspring, they would likely react aggressively. But he wasn't thinking of his own safety, he needed to find the child. With trembling hands and a racing heart, he cautiously illuminated the den with his flashlight, anxious about both the wolves and the potential discovery he might make. He wanted to find the baby, but he was also scared about what would happen when he did. In what type of shape would she be? Was this accident going to leave giant scars all over their hearts? 
It was a possibility he could not ignore, but he had to push through his own feelings and keep going. The first den was abandoned. There were even spiderwebs in the entrance. The wolves hadn't entered there in a while. It struck out with all the dens in the area. It had just taken away some of his time, time he should have been using to go out and find her. The fact that he had to go past those dens also added another complication to an already horrible day. The pole prints overlapped, and it was hard to figure out which belonged to the wolf that he had been tracking. He couldn't lose the tracks now. It would be the end of any hope they still had left. He went back to the point where he had last seen the tracks. Then he carefully moved forward, making sure to keep track of the wolf he was tracking. At last he came out from the other end, still knowing which paw prints to look out for. He could keep tracking. As he moved further, the terrain started to become a lot more familiar. He had come from the opposite end of the woods, but this was for sure an area he had explored before. He had even been out in these woods, saving a bunch of teenagers on an adventure before. The woods seemed deceptively easy to walk, but if you weren't careful, you could lose the trail and completely get lost. For that very reason, the park officials set up a few cabins around the area with basic supplies. That way, people could stock up if they were running low on rations, or they could just use the cabin as a warm place when camping got too cold. But that didn't help Nolan now. A wolf doesn't exactly know about cabins of safety, or do they? Those cabins didn't normally have a lot of people in them, but the tracks weren't leading Nolan to them. Instead, they took him up into the mountains. He was shocked when he started to realize where the wolf was going. The tracks led him to a remote cabin in the woods, a cabin that was usually occupied by park rangers and the occasional biologist. Wolves are shy. Why would this one be going straight toward people? It was very weird, and the worst part was that the cabin had been abandoned for months. If the wolf had been hoping to find anyone there, then he was going to be disappointed. Having a good idea of where he was going helped Nolan move a lot faster. The wolf had found the baby after the car accident, and then he had brought her into the woods. But now the unthinkable was going to happen. He reached the clearing where the cabin was built, and there, on the porch, he found something that would change his outlook forever. He expected to find a wolf that had harmed the baby, but what he saw was a wolf napping in the sun, and tucked in its side was a tiny baby. She wasn't crying, and that worried Nolan. He wanted to get her medical treatment as quickly as he could, but first, he had to get her away from the wolf who was cuddling her like she was a puppy. But then something strange happened. The moment the wolf saw Nolan, it stood up. Nolan waited for signs of aggression and got his flare gun out as a way to defend himself, but that wouldn't be necessary. The wolf looked down at the baby, and then it got off of the porch and walked away. The wolf's behavior suggested that it simply wanted to reunite the baby with her own kind, seeking help for her. Thinking of everything that happened, it was shocking to realize that the wolf had never been a threat. In fact, it saved the baby. First, it had taken the baby away from the burning vehicle, likely assuming the mother wouldn't survive. So it attempted to bring the baby to other humans who could care for her. The wolf paused at the forest's edge, gazing at the baby for a brief moment. Then it turned and left them. Nolan quickly rushed over to the baby. Despite the day being really cold, the baby was warm. The wolf's cuddles had kept her from freezing. The level of empathy this wolf had shown was simply amazing, but that didn't mean the baby was safe. She had no bite marks or anything that showed the wolf being rough with her, but she did have bruises from the car accident. What if she had internal injuries? They had to get her to the hospital as soon as possible. Nolan had just picked her up when something horrifying happened. The baby stopped breathing. There was no time to hike out of the woods with her. She needed help right now. Nolan immediately administered mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Her heart was still beating, albeit faintly, so compressions weren't necessary, which was a relief to Nolan given his size. He was concerned about accidentally injuring her further. After a few breaths, the child started breathing again. Nolan wasn't taking any chances. He called for help, and then he took the baby and hiked to a clearing that was close by. He had walked for a little while when he looked back, 
and saw the wolf following them. It seemed like the animal was still invested in making sure that the baby was going to be okay. Having a wolf stalking him should have been unsettling, but in an unusual way, it was comforting to Nolan. It made him feel like he wasn't entirely alone in the daunting responsibility of caring for this little life. Nolan had helped save many lives in his time in the service and had been in many stressful situations. But looking down at the tiny, fragile little girl in his arms, he had never been more afraid in his life. It was a massive relief when the chopper arrived with paramedics in it. Nolan could hand the baby over, and they could get her to the hospital where her anxious family awaited her arrival. The baby had a few injuries, but they could all be fixed relatively easily. But if it wasn't for the help of a man and a wolf, that might not have been the case. A few days later, the mother was brought out of her induced coma, and the first face that she saw was that of her husband, who was holding Anna. The baby was happily chewing on her hands, perfect as any baby could be. The baby was safe, and the mother was going to heal completely. They later asked her to meet Nolan to thank him in person. It brought the big man to tears to see the baby happy and smiling while being wrapped up in her mother's arms. A few months later, the couple did something else to show their appreciation. Nolan took the family to the old cabin where he found the wolf and the baby. The family wanted to know where it all went down. They were looking around when a movement caught Nolan's eyes. The wolf was once again standing there at the edge of the forest. It looked at the baby and watched all of them intently for a few seconds. Then, just as quickly as the wolf appeared, it went back into the forest and it was gone. It got to see that the baby it had saved was healthy and well, and for that, her family would love both Nolan and the wolf forever. Thanks for watching. Join us again for more incredible stories that can inspire you.